Welcome back fellow aircraft builders and aviation enthusiasts. I'm taking a little break from assembly today so I can uh, lay out the rest of my parts in 63 thousandths. Part of the reason I'm doing that is because I had to remake several of the brackets for the horizontal stabilizer which you may see in some of those other videos. So I originally bought a half a sheet of 63 thousandths and that should have been enough to do all the parts in the plane for the most part one time over and then some of the smaller parts additionally if need be. So right now I'm laying out some of the more complicated parts and some of the larger parts to see kind of where I'm at with this material uh, to determine if I need to order more. And so you can see here doing a lot of drafting work on the aluminum here and uh, doing things like this. These are the side skin gussets here that are laid out by coordinate and then I've got the uh, top channel, rear top channel top fuselage doublers and some other bits and things that are going on here. I don't actually have too many more parts to make in this thickness so I think I'm gonna have plenty because all this area out here is still wide open. So as long as I don't screw up any of these longer uh, parts or anything like that I should have plenty of material. But today's video I want to show you just a couple of little tidbits on drawing out your parts. Now some folks are actually uh, creating CAD drawings of the pieces and parts in the blueprints. They're then printing them out and making traceable templates out of them so they can kind of nest all the parts together and maximize the amount of aluminum. And I could have done that, but honestly, I think that will take longer uh, than I really needed to, at least for this thickness. So I'm perfectly comfortable with basically nesting them on myself. And I'm sorry about the glare here, it's just the nature of the aluminum, but if you can see here, this right here is the fuselage doubler. This goes all, or the top fuselage doubler goes all the way back to here. And then the flipped upside down version of the same part is right along here. And so I've nested them myself just kind of manually. And again, because of the small parts count in this thickness, I'm pretty sure I can get away with that. But what I want to show you is uh, if you're measuring across longer distances like this and you're trying to use, say, that framing square or some other type of like a drywall square, you can end up kind of off of square the farther you get away from the root of the measurement because the material will flex. The actual square material uh, will flex and it's very rigid and drywall squares are notorious for having you know several millimeters side play end to end. So what I'm going to do is set up with a couple of drafting triangles and these are actually my drafting triangles from high school uh, and college and uh, I'm going to set these up and show you some cheat methods that you can use to draw perpendicular lines or parallel lines very rapidly in any given space. You don't actually need the square side of the material to measure off of if you use these quick methods. So hopefully I'll be able to get the camera angle set up properly so we can see that and demonstrate that. And that works if you're just trying to duplicate saw lines or perimeter lines up here to continue to stack parts up. And it also works out in these open areas if you have no real good references for squareness. If you just have an open space and you want to throw a part down in there in an orientation that you want to put it in, you can use these triangles to do that to still maintain square coordinate base for your reference lines. So we'll get the camera set up and show you how to do that. Hang on just a second. All right, folks. So um, I've got my two rear seat channel uh, pieces laid out here and they're separated by about a quarter of an inch that's going to allow plenty of room for me to cut with the saw and then uh, additional material to trim off and, and file flat if I need to. A quarter inch is probably more than I really need but I don't want to take any risks if I end up cutting an irregular line. Even if I do this on the bandsaw or use a cutting fence with my circular saw or you know use the nibblers or whatever method I use on this I want to leave myself extra. It's going to result in some more cutting, but I want to make sure that I don't screw up the part instead. So right above these parts, this is some blank material, this is some extra material. I'm laying out the landing gear doublers or the gear channel doublers that go inside the gear channel. And so what I've done is I'm going to have two doublers side by side, so here and here, from the end of the material there. This is the edge of one doubler, this hash mark here is the end of the other one and that goes out to this line here. And those are simply 25 millimeters wide, so uh, not very wide, just over an inch roughly. And so 
They're 230 millimeters long by 25 millimeters wide, so they're not very large parts. I've already marked off the one dimension here. There's a hash mark up here, and then a hash mark here on the edge of the material. But what I need are lines that are perfectly perpendicular to this cut line. This up here is an irregular line because of another part that I cut out. And then because of the distance from the other side of the stock, I don't want to use my drywall square because I'll actually be, end up being off quite a bit up here because of the distance down from the root measurement. So taking my good old trusty $1 grafting squares, at least, you know, 25 some years ago, whenever I bought these things back in high school, I think I was in ninth grade. So late 80s. <laughs> <laughs> and I've kept them. What I'm going to do is, is lay two of them out side by side like this and put them uh, the diagonal angle together like that. And then I'm going to take the edge of the 45, and it doesn't matter if you use the 30, 60, 90, or the 45 degree triangle. I'm going to put the edge of it right on the line that I need to be perpendicular. So the very edge of the rear seat channel cut line, I'm going to line that up perfectly making sure that this triangle is perfectly in line with that. And then I'm just simply going to slide it up along the other triangle like so to that, ha that first hash mark. And take my Sharpie and mark the first one like so. And then I'm going to move, I'm going to continue moving up that line and I've separated these two marks by a quarter of an inch to give me you know, cut space between the two parts and mark the second line. And so now if you look down here, I've got two lines that are perfectly perpendicular to that part, that cut line. So now I can take my straight edge and lay it across the measurement line. Actually, I need a little longer one. I can take my straight edge and lay it across the measurement line for the 25 millimeters wide width, just like so. Make sure I've got those lined up on those hash marks properly. And then simply draw my, my second cut line for the outer edge of those parts all the way across. And so now I've got two 230 millimeter long parts down to the edge of that cut line there for the gear channel doublers. So that's one way to rapidly lay out very square parts using existing refer reference lines, regardless of whether you have a square edge um, uh, of material to work with. You don't need to worry about this actually as a slightly irregular edge here, and I've used it for reference on some of these parts because I'm only using it for a point or something like that. But uh, for the most part, this is fairly straight, but not, not straight enough for me to be using it as a squareness reference line. So you can see I'm stacking all these parts as I go, the full, full thickness of material. I've got the top channel, the rear top channel pattern. Um, another part here, I forget what that one's called. The fuselage top doublers nested together, the door sill doublers, rear seat channel, rear seat channel, and now the two gear channels. Over here, I've got the side skin gussets mirroring each other. So the two side skin gussets, there's a right and a left, although you don't have to draw them this way. I did that so that I would have this large open space to work with for additional parts such as hinge brackets and things like that. So I'm going to pause the video again. I'm going to come back and lay out some random parts in here, just various orientations that will try to maximize the amount of material. And I'm going to show you how to do that with the triangles as well. All right, guys. So real quick, I just want to show you one other thing before I lay out one of these just random parts. I'm using a reference line here off of one of the other cut lines uh, to lay out the lower rudder hinge plate. This is just a good space, good area here that I have to lay it out. So I went ahead and you can see here I've drawn my, you can see here I've drawn my perpendicular lines here uh, using the method with the triangles that I showed you. I didn't have to mess with a square or anything like that, just the dual triangle method. And it's, it's good for doing 90 degree angles or perpendicular lines, but it's also excellent for doing horizontal lines. So I need to put a bend line in 47 millimeters up from the base baseline measurement here. And so I've got the hash mark right there. Now I could just measure up over on this side and uh, connect the dots you know, which is pretty typical. That's how you lay out a lot of your parts. But on these smaller parts, this triangle method works out really well. You can measure once and then take the triangles and 
show you real quick like so you can take the triangles measuring essentially one time and lining them up with your your baseline your measure your baseline which is my cut line in this in this example and then just slide the triangle up to meet where the 47 millimeter mark is draw my bend line and now between here and here or the bend line is exactly parallel to the reference line the whole part is now square I've already put a center line in here for uh, uh, where I need to draw my radius at the top and everything for the hinge bracket so you can do a lot with just a couple of drafting triangles uh, just to speed up the process and to ensure that your parts are very square so again when we come back I'm gonna find an open area on the table to draw some random parts at random orientations just to show you that you don't actually need that square reference uh, of the edge of the material if you don't if you don't have it but that's all for this video be sure to like comment or subscribe and let me know if you have any requests for future video content as always thanks for watching and good luck with your projects